Now, U.S. police in Cleveland have pepper sprayed predominantly black activists attending a conference on police brutality against African Americans. The officers also made some arrests, including a 14-year-old boy, after the weekend convention wrapped up. The National Convention of the Movement for Black Lives began on a Friday to draw attention to police interaction with black communities in the wake of a raft of incidents involving police and African citizens. The chain of events began in the summer of 2014 when the shooting death of Michael Brown by Ferguson officer and has continued to this date. The Cleveland Police Department is already under a reform program after a federal probe into its use of force practices and policies. Two of its officers are also currently under investigation for the November 2014 shooting death of a 12-year-old black teenager. Joining us now is Jesse Naval. He's with the African People's Solidarity Committee, and he joins us via Skype from St. Petersburg. Many thanks for joining us here on Price TV, Mr. Naval. Now, first Thank of all, you. don't you find it a bit ironic uh, that on a d after a convention which was held to discuss police and African-American community relations, the police attacked those people who were in attendance? Um, yes, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me on Press TV. It's an honor to be here today. And greetings to all of you on behalf of the African People's Solidarity Committee. And um, I think it's very revealing uh, that a, a conference to protest police violence against the black community is met with even yet more violence against the black community at the hands of the police. And as you noted at the beginning of the broadcast, uh, this incident took place in Cleveland where um, just a few months ago, a 12-year-old black boy, Tamir Rice, was gunned down uh, on a playground. But I think it's important to uh, remember that this is an issue that is peculiar to Cleveland, that in Detroit, the police shot a 7-year-old African girl named Ayanna Jones. And in cities throughout this country, the police kill another black man, woman, or child every 26 hours, according to the statistics that have been released. So what we see is that the same U.S. government that is waging wars all over the world, waging wars in the Middle East, waging proxy wars in Africa, funding Israel's wars against the Palestinian people, is carrying out a war against the African community inside this country. Right, so uh, Mr. Navarro, how would you respond to those that say that the U.S. government is trying to bring reforms? Like, for example, this Cleveland Police Department itself is right now going through a reform program. Well, um, we would say that you cannot reform imperialism. You cannot reform colonialism, that we're looking at a whole social system that was built on the enslavement of African people, the genocide against the indigenous people of this land, colonialism all over the planet, that the only thing that will end these conditions is when African people and other oppressed people have self-determination and what the uh, organizations like the Uhuru Movement and the Black is Back Coalition are calling for, they're saying, Black power matters, that the black community has a right to have power over the police in their communities, black community control of the police. That's the only real uh, reform, um, if you will, that will bring about real transformation of the conditions faced by oppressed people in this country. All right, let's leave it there for now. That's uh, Jesse Navelle with the African People's Solidarity Committee joining us via Skype from St. Petersburg. Mr. Navelle, thank you very much indeed for your comments here on Press TV.